BioBalance HealthCast episode 253, when testosterone is not the answer to ED. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So our most recent HealthCast discussed the evaluation process by which you determine if men who contact you are good candidates, appropriate candidates Mm -hmm. for hormone replacement therapies involving testosterone, estrogen, uh, and thyroid. Uh, Assuming, as a follow-up now for this week, we're going to be talking about the next step. Mm -hmm. So I'm a good candidate. I come to you. I get those hormones replaced. But it still doesn't resolve the symptomology that I had been complaining about, in particular in terms of sexual function, libido, uh, erections, what have you. So what do you do then? Because to just say, well, it's not going to work for you, you need, you know, sorry, you're, you're getting no. old, you're getting fat, you're getting stupid. Uh, <laughs> or do you have a checklist of strategies or concerns that you then look at to see why is it not working? Because it should be working given your circumstances. Uh, we, we've already predetermined that. Mm-hmm. It's not working. So where do you go then when they come back and say, I'm not getting the results that I expected to get. I'm not happy with this. Well, I don't turn people away for smoking. Okay. But I have no idea how long they've smoked. I didn't ask that question on, on the questionnaire, how long they've smoked or how much damage they've done to their lungs. Mm-hmm. So one of the reasons that, Testosterone is not the only answer to ED for smokers is that if you've smoked a long time or if you're really sensitive to to cigarettes or cigars Mm -hmm. or pipes, then you can damage your lungs so that your oxygen content in your whole body is is actually too low. So like when they put the blood oxygen monitor on your finger at the emergency Mm -hmm. room and they get a readout, Mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about, the the flow of... Uh, the actual I, content. So, so how you get oxygen in your body is your mm-hmm. heart pumps deoxygenated blood through your lungs. Okay. And then your lungs They're pick like a up sponge. Pick up oxygen up. Yeah. while you breathe, uh-huh. and and it is actually dissolves and goes into the bloodstream. It's picked up by hemoglobin. Hemoglobin in your blood in the red cell then carries the oxygen to all your tissues. Right. And God was so smart that made our necks like our brains really close to our heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we get Just the best get first. best oxygenation first yeah. there. But the worst oxygenation is to your feet and to your lower to- torso. So your penis is less important than your neck or your brain. In the end, yes, but in in <laughs> in anthro- in anthropology that's probably opposite. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, discussable. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it is something we could argue about yeah. for a while. But but in reality, you need oxygen to actually Make tissues dilate, make vessels dilate. You need oxygen to have an erection. You need oxygen to think. You need oxygen to heal your heal heal sores on your legs or or bug bites or any kind of damage. You need oxygen. So if you don't have oxygen, if you're a chain smoker and have been forever, and you come to me and your testosterone's low because you're not you're kind of you're not very healthy anyway because you've not been giving oxygen to your to your whole so, system. So I have a good friend who's my age. He's maybe he's, I'm 67. He's 68, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's never been a smoker, but he's worked in factories and construction mm-hmm. all his life, and he has pretty advanced COPD. Any kind of COPD for any reason decreases your oxygen levels. And C- COPD doesn't just come from smoking. No, it does not. No, it does not. And there are some people with the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency genetically. I Sorry, I know. I know. So it's like talking impressive. Greek or German or something that yeah. I don't know how Latin. to speak. Yeah. Latin, that's it. Yeah. Uh, in any case, if you have that deficiency from birth, you end up with COPD and you don't get enough oxygen. Okay, it gets worse as you get older. But So there are genetic reasons. There's exposure reasons. And there's exposure that you do to yourself, which is smoking. I guess if you sniff glue, glue, that would also damage your lungs as well. But any kind of damage to your lungs it's decreases a kind of a, a stringent uh, environment. Something that is actually it is um, well, it's just damaging to lungs. Not everything that where I mean, right. not every chemical right. is damaging to your right. lungs. So 
if you, um, when you do this, you break up the alveoli. Alveoli are little sacs. So the more little sacs that you have, the more surface area mm -hmm. you have. Mm -hmm. So you have like a football field of surface area in your lungs if they're well. But if they're if they've been damaged, all those little those little alveoli burst and make a big alveoli. Mm -hmm. So then the surface area is less than if you had two little alveoli. Right. So basically, that's what COPD does. It doesn't pick up enough oxygen when your heart pushes the blood through your lungs, and so you're not oxygenating any of your tissues properly. If you have that and smoke still, mm -hmm. then that makes it even worse, decreasing your oxygen level in your blood. So. That can cause lots of things, but when we're talking about sexual function, that decreases sexual function. So you find that, that men lie about how much they do or have smoked or... They do until they're caught. <laughs> until we get down to this and... Yeah, you get down to this and, and it's still not working, then so you say, why not? Are you out of breath when you walk up the stairs? Are you out of breath when you're sitting? Are you, at, you know, that kind of thing. Do you use oxygen? Sometimes they won't tell me about their oxygen use at night. Because of their COPD, they use it to sleep. So if they have a CPAP machine? That's not the same. CPAP can, could make you hypoxic, but, I mean, CPAP wouldn't, but I mean, um, um, I'm just blanking on not being able to to breathe while you're sleeping. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> In any case. We both have we an all, aphasia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We aren't anoxic, but yeah. we are aphasic. In any case, when if you have to use a CPAP machine, CPAP makes your oxygenation better. Mm -hmm. But it won't work for COPD. COPD just needs oxygen. But would it work for ED? If I if I used a yeah. CPAP for a half hour before I tried to have sex, would that oxygen? I don't my have system? that information. I don't know that. I know that if you use it regularly, then your tissues are are, are better. oxygenated yeah. better than if you don't. Right. But I don't have the information about short-term use. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, we didn't. Just curiosity. We didn't see, yeah. you can tell we didn't practice this. So, um, so the next, the no, next it's, it's, issue is. That's not what it is. It's my undisciplined response. My brain just fires those. <laughs> those hey, what about this? Yeah. So the next, the next one we've talked about in our uh, before, but diabetes damages blood vessels. Anything that damages blood vessels, oxygenation, or your nerves in your pelvis, damages your ability to have an erection. So. Diabetes can damage nerves and can damage uh, blood vessels, decreasing your ability to get blood flow to the pelvis. So keeping your diabetes in control for your whole life, if you've had it, losing weight, not requiring so many drugs for your diabetes helps. And it pre helps prevent ED in the future. So testosterone is not going to fix that part. It may be helpful but it may, it's not going to be the only answer to that. So to the degree that desire and arousal contribute to erections, testosterone will help. Yes. To the degree that other factors are blocking your erections, like poor oxygenation, constricted blood vessels, mm -hmm. uh, the testosterone isn't going to impact that because there are defenders preventing the fact that you're uh, desiring to have sex. Mm-hmm doesn't mean that you're going to have an erection. That's true. But it's so I kind I kind of explain this to people who have tried the testosterone mm -hmm. and haven't gotten the effect they want. Right. Because many of these got these guys who have poor oxygenation and diabetes, they get a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. I mean, testosterone will make it better, but not where they want to be. So then we have to add something else. There are shots that you can put into the penis that have prostaglandins in them. Uh-huh. They can give you an erection. They have, a, they have a super tiny little needle, and they inject yeah. themselves in the head of the penis. In, no, in the base of the penis, the right the against penis. your body. Okay. So I have people go to their urologist to start that because that's a very anatomy-controlled uh, issue, and the and the urologists are the ones that do best at telling you exactly where to put the shot. Mm -hmm. So that works, and that for can work for diabetics. Might be right for where yeah. you just can't you, you can't get an erection or you can't keep an erection, this helps. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of people say this helps a lot, but if they take away the testosterone, they have to use more of that drug. Okay. So testosterone actually makes them healthier in many ways, but it's not going to fix this alone. Right. And that's what people think. They think, oh, I'm going to get testosterone. And if they and have that's low it. testosterone, but they use those prostaglandin shots, they may get an erection, but they aren't going to feel aroused and, and right. sexy. Right. Uh, they're just going to have the erection. Right. Which, and that's not always all you need. You need to have the desire. Well, no. I mean, it, 
I know this is not what our conversation is about, <laughs> but there are a number of strategies for men who have had damage, uh, one of which is they can put in an artificial pump. And there's right. a button that they can push to mm -hmm. get an erection. Or they can mm -hmm. put in a sheath in the bottom of their penis. Surgically. Which can make it erect, and then they mm -hmm. disconnect it so that it goes flaccid again. And I've talked to guys in my business mm -hmm. who have those issues, mm -hmm. and they say sometimes they get an erection so that they can be a good partner, but they're really not involved or there in the sense of being aroused. And what That's I what didn't know helps. those years ago mm -hmm was, you know what, maybe you need some testosterone. And now mm -hmm. that'd be the very first thing that I would say to somebody, mm -hmm. maybe you need to check out your testosterone in addition to this for a more complete sense of participation and satisfaction. I, that's, a very, that's a very good takeaway from this. Sometimes testosterone is the whole answer right. to both desire, ED, and being healthier. But sometimes there are other medical mitigating factors that make you have to add things to your testosterone or get other treatments from other types of doctors so that you can live a full, healthy life and have a sex life the rest of your life if you want to and if your partner wants to. That's very important. And then that brings us to some of the damage that we do by surgery. The we prostate do, surgery. Pro the prostate surgery mm -hmm. has inherent in it the possibility to damage these tiny nerves that run through the prostate and have to be dissected out uh, so that you don't damage them. It's a microsurgery. It and is. And it requires a great deal of skill. And, many, and even in the most skilled hands, uh -huh. you can get damage to a nerve that goes in the wrong direction. It's not, not everybody is exactly like a Ken doll or whatever. Not exactly a Ken doll, but, but we're not all the same. Mm -hmm. And therefore, nerves go this way or this way instead of this way. So you, you have to be able to dissect them out. And even in the best of hands, they can be damaged. Even by right. putting a little retractor on them and pulling them to the side, that can damage the and nerve will they itself. Will heal over time? or Not, is it not usually. Done. I mean, over... The doctors usually give, the surgeons give them a certain period of time to come back. And mm -hmm. then after that, and I think it's a year. Mm -hmm. I, I don't quote me on that, but a year. Because that's not your specialty. That's not my specialty and that's right. not what I do. But I believe that it's a year. And if you haven't healed after that, or you haven't gotten the nervous, uh, or your nerves, re, sometimes they re-anastomose. They grow together again and reattach. If you haven't gotten that to happen in a year, usually that's not going to happen. You're, you're not going to get it. It's not going to come back after a year. But there are some medicines that they use to try to help that process mm -hmm. if you've been damaged through that kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. One is a drug called Muse. Muse is a, um, like we talked about the injections mm -hmm. for uh, the prostate. They, they would work in this case too. But what I would do first is to use a prescription called Muse. And it, they're tiny little, they're like, um, they're like pills, but they're itty bitty. And they go into, into the urethra. At the very head we, of the penis. You feed them into the top? You feed them into the top. <laughs> okay. And it takes a few minutes. Yes, I would but imagine. But the it. body absorbs the prostaglandins, and the prostaglandins then create an erection. And that could be part of what we call foreplay. <laughs> yeah, it can. It be. actually could be. I mean, it doesn't have to be an embarrassing thing or a secretive thing. And obviously, if you're in a relationship and you're trying to have a continued healthy sex life in a relationship, those things are not hidden things anyway. And, they, and they're and they certainly not shameful things that you need mm -hmm. to be embarrassed about or afraid of. They are natural occurrences because of conditions that you've experienced that are treatable. So Absolutely. treat them. So, tre so treat them. <laughs> Don't hide from them. <laughs> But, yeah. yeah, because then that causes lots of other oh, relationship issues. Yes. But this it is mm -hmm. very effective, and so are the shots in this case. But oftentimes you still need the testosterone to have the desire. So that's an issue with prostate cancer. So there's another thing that's not in our list that can contribute to erectile dysfunction, and that is taking uh, antidepressants. A lot mm -hmm. of the antidepressants that you take, a side effect of those is that you lose desire or you lose the ability to have or maintain an erection. Mm -hmm. So you can be aroused and in the middle of sexual activity and all of a sudden just lose it. I mean, it's like it never was there and it's like, oh gosh, what's on TV? That's exactly how and, it's described. And if you do not understand that ahead of time, what happens is your partner gets devastated because they think you don't want them and you don't care about or them. they did something wrong so doctors ought to be talking to their patients about the sexual side effects mm -hmm. of antidepressant uh, medicines 
But in my experience, they don't very often do that. And so then they show up in my office <laughs> saying, there's still a problem here. What is it? And one of the things that I ask them to consider and to get information about is the kind of antidepressant that they're on. Right. Because not all of them do it, but many of them do it. And sometimes you have to try several to, before you find the right, right. one that both, both treats depression and doesn't cause that kind of a side effect. However, many times depression is secondary to low testosterone or low thyroid. And yep. if we treat that, sometimes yes. you don't need the antidepressant. Right, and they come off of it. And they come off of it, and then that makes everything work better. However, I I never take people off of it myself. No, no. They have to go to their doctor. I'm not saying this is a is a permission to just go off your antidepressant. No. That's not what I'm saying. If we're doing all this and you have your testosterone on board and you're feeling happier and things aren't so boring and so gray, then you talk to the doctor that put you on that medication and see if they feel you can wean off. What about things like high blood pressure medicines or beta blockers? Will you they know, affect that? Yeah, we use beta blockers oftentimes for high blood pressure, but we also use it for heart arrhythmias. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I see people who are on blood pressure medicine such that their blood pressure is low. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't have low blood pressure and have an erection. It just doesn't work. It's contradiction. Uh, yeah, because the, the blood doesn't flow to, uh, I mean, you need a dilation of the blood vessels, but you don't want low blood pressure. And in layman's terms, that's what happens with things like Viagra and Cialis is they redirect where the pressure points are so mm -hmm. that you have the fluid for the erection that you need. Yeah, blood. Blood flow. So, so basically, if you're on low, if you're on blood pressure medicine and it brings your blood pressure too low, great for your brain, maybe great for for the other parts, the other big vessels in your body, but not great for erections. So, if you add to that, that if you're on a blood pressure medicine, you add to that that you um, are dehydrated or worked outside all day, then that increases your low blood pressure. Your low pressure blood pressure gets worse because, because you're sweating. Dehydration? Because you're sweating and yeah. you're dehydrated. Okay. So basically you have to hydrate with lots of water and not maybe alcohol. G two, not alcohol, because that's dehydrating too, and so yeah. is coffee and tea. So lots of water with electrolytes in them for you to get your blood volume back before you can have intercourse. So that's very important. Or talk to your doctor about lowering your dose of your blood pressure medicine. If it really keeps you that low, that also makes you tired. Beta blockers stop the rate of your heart from being too high, but and that also causes you to have lower blood pressure. So if you're taking both, that's not a very good um, recipe for having good erections. So you can talk to your other doctor who put you on those and say, can I find one? And can we do, like, my favorite you know, is Benicar or Cardiozyme, they both seem to allow people to have a normal blood pressure, not low, mm -hmm. a normal blood pressure, and be able to have erections. So I try to get my patients to take one of those two, and that does help, but I also tell them they have to be hydrated. So ideally, you go to a physician that takes a holistic look at you, that isn't just so specialized that the only thing they're concerned about is preventing a heart attack because they can give you medicines to prevent the heart attack, which will keep you alive, but your quality of life and relationships will deteriorate if these other things are not addressed as well. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to three or four or five doctors and three or four or five pharmacies and nobody talks to each other, really get yourself mm -hmm. tied in a knot. You want to have a holistic approach to looking at your health and your quality of life. And always being safe. Always. But safe. not over being over treated with something that causes you another side effect. Well, and sometimes you you take situational cost factors. Right now, because my heart is so damaged or my diabetes is so out of control, the side effect is going to impact my sex drive. But when I get this under control, then we can revisit this. Right. There are strategies that we can use. Which Absolutely. Which is part of what you do when you have these conversations mm -hmm. with people. So sometimes it's much more complicated than it looks. Mm -hmm. And to be safe, when we, when we give testosterone, we always have to look and make sure that somebody is healthy enough for sex. That's why they always say that with the, the commercials for Viagra and Cialis. Make sure you're healthy enough for sex. That means make sure that your atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries has not compromised the blood flow to your heart so mm -hmm. much that you'll have a heart attack when you have the it, when you participate in the 
exercise of sex. You also say that they sometimes should go to uh, doctors who specialize in blood flow. And I'm oh, cardiac, uh, vascular surgeons. Vascular surgeons to check the blood flow in their pelvis. So the scenario would be this. I, they come in, they need testosterone. I give them testosterone, they get their desire back. All their other symptoms get better. They still don't have good erections. Their blood sugar is okay. They don't smoke. Their blood pressure is not too low. Right. They aren't taking any of these drugs. I've ruled out everything else. And then I just want to know if they're getting enough blood flow to their pelvis. This doesn't make any sense. Right. It could be psychological, but it's a lot faster for me to send you to a, a vascular surgeon who's going to use a Doppler, which is a non-invasive ultrasound, to see if you get enough blood flow to your pelvis. You, know, you and, sound like Dr. House all the time. It's just like we have to solve this problem, answer this question, diagnose this issue to know what That's to how do. medicine's done. I mean, it's... It's amazing. It is how, you know, you're going down a decision tree and you decide what's most important and what's most life-threatening. You fix that first. Well, when and I then, call my insurance company, they just use a computer. <laughs> they just look it up and go, this is what you can have. That's why medicine can't be done by a computer. There's Amen. still people. There's still people involved, and as long as there's patients, there's going to have to be doctors because the computer's not going to do it. So it's better to prevent diseases than treat them. Yeah, because you can see how complicated it is to treat them once you've yeah. once you've got a problem. So it has to do with quality of life, and especially as you reach the aging point where your body naturally begins to lose some of its functionality. If there are things that can be done to address holistically your life circumstances and retain or replace that functionality so that as you age, you are still as good to go for all kinds of activities as you ever have been, then you ought to check it out. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.